What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome to the channel. This channel all about fitness and martial arts for OGs, for guys who are old as shit like me. Well, I'm 44, so for most people, I'm old. I think for the demographics that actually listen to my videos, right? Um, but yeah, obviously there's always people who are older. So in this video, we're gonna talk about one randori a week and why you should only do once a week randori hard randori okay and i'm gonna play this video for you guys to just for a little bit of background entertainment you know um this is uh yancy darcel yancy right a french judoka coral belt a very high level trainer and i love this guy's style if for those of you guys who don't know i'm a black belt in judo and i've been doing this for eight years and a blue belt in BJJ, and I do a whole bunch of all uh, of martial arts. I love it all. I'm a martial artist um, first off, and then after that, a judoka uh, second, and then everything else afterwards. Okay, so and oh yeah, so my when I first started judo, my first ju uh, judo coach was actually a French judoka. So my style, my my judo is is more of a French judo, if that makes sense. I'm gonna make a video about that. That would be an interesting interesting topic for you guys. Uh, you know, be, the difference between French judo, uh, Japanese judo, um, you know, Eastern Eastern Bloc Euro, uh, judo, and and so on. But let's stick to the subject at hand. Let me just play this video for you guys. Turn off the volume. Boom. All right, so why do I think that you guys should only, especially, especially if you're an OG, if you're an older guy, you have stuff to do, you don't want to get injured, and so on and so on. Okay, so why would you only do Randori once a week? Well, there's a lot of benefits to this. And the first one, and, and listen, this is true across all martial arts, all disciplines. So whether you're striking, you're grappling, or, um, you know, yeah, well, those are basically the only two. I just covered everything. But yeah, uh, in boxing, in wrestling, it's all once a week, man. It's all once a week. And even then, all the all the top-level coaches, uh, they all agree. It's once a week. If you're doing more than once a week hard uh, randori or hard sparring, it's, it's detrimental. It can be. And you know why? Because you're going to get injured. Like the risk of injury when you're doing things uh, at 100%. Even in grappling, man, like in judo, like if you don't uh, you give your body a break, things are gonna start to um, to get fatigued. You're not you're not gonna have time to recover. And then when you're tired and you train hard, that's like a, the, the recipe for disaster, right? So really, just once a week. Um, and okay, so first things first. And oh, here's the thing. You have to actually be able to spar, you know, hard, right? But before you're able to spar hard, let's say once a week, you actually have to be able to spar light. If you can't even spar light, right? You can't even go light in, in randori or in sparring. I'm going to entertain these two terms. Sparring usually um, where we think more of striking arts, you know, like boxing, kickboxing, you know, MMA. And in randori, randori is actually a Japanese term for free practice, but it's it's essentially sparring. Okay, so before you can get into hard sparring, you have to actually get into light sparring, and you have to get good at it. So you have to be able to uh, go light, or you know what they also call it, uh, touch sparring, so where you're just touching your partner. If you're doing striking, if you're doing um, you know grappling, then you have to be able to go light. You have to be able to flow roll, or in judo, it would. I guess there's not really a term for it, but just go light, all right? Play. Okay, and because if you're not able to do that, when you go hard, eesh, it's going to um, it's gonna be a disaster, man. So, da, 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 da. yes, and that's the thing. If you don't know how to go light, this is how it's usually going to go down. If you can't go light and then you do hard sparring once a week, the person that you're going to go with, they're gonna crank it up as well, the intensity, because you're not you, because you can't go light, then they're not gonna go light. It's gonna escalate usually. That's what happens, and then you're gonna get smashed. Even if the person is, um, whether the person is on your at your level or higher, they're gonna they're gonna end up smashing you, right? Or you're gonna end up smashing them, and anyways, it's just not good. So 
that's that's going to be detrimental to your progression as well. If you get smashed or if you smash people and then you, somebody else comes in and smashes you and yeah, there's no, you know, it's, it's, you, you're going to get, you're going to improve a lot slower like that. If you don't know how to spar, once you know how to spar light, right? You know how to flow roll, you know how to play, then going hard makes sense once a week. Okay. And so what do you do when you, you don't, uh, when you only focus, when you only do hard randori once a week? Well, you would do other stuff. You would focus on techniques, on technique. You would drill a lot. Okay. And you would focus on your conditioning. So conditioning, meaning you would work on your athleticism. Okay. With different types of drills and all that for your sport. Um, and you're going to work on your, um, your technique, of course, and you're going to drill a lot and you're going to see if you do more of that. Okay. 80% of the time, 80 to 90% of the time, you're just drilling, working on technique, working on your conditioning, getting stronger, getting more athletic, getting more, um, work on your agility, your balance, your, uh, your timing, you know, your fight IQ, all these things, 80% of the time. And then, you know, 80 to 90% of the time and in 10, 20% of the time. Okay. Then you do your, your, your hard sparring, right? So that you could, uh, you could really get a feel for it and really to be able to perform under pressure, right? Because you, you got to test it out. You got to take it for a test run, right? To see where your skill level is at and where your body is at. And then you go back to the drawing board, um, after that and you see how you did. And then from there you make your adjustments and that would be be like the way to go about it. So let me just take a look, look at my notes here quick, quick. Um, and also you don't get injured like this. Like if you, if you just, and let's say for example, you do one hard session, but then after that you're injured, well, take more time off. You don't have to do once a week. I'm just saying once a week would be the maximum, right? Now this is not, if you're in a training, if you're in a, like a, a training camp preparing for a competition, then this is going to be different. So obviously you're going to have to talk to your coach and see how they, um, you know, they're able to schedule that up and all. But I mean, yeah, you might do more, you'll do more randomly, but still it's going to be spaced out properly. You might do two hard sessions a week instead of, um, instead of one, but your body's going to be prepared for it. You know, you, because if you on the so-called off season, you prepare the body properly and you've been training properly up until that point, most likely it's going to be like two hard sessions a week. You know, and then after that, as you get closer to competition, obviously they dial it back down because you need time to recuperate and and to to let everything heal so that you're ready for competition, right? So yeah, it never really passes like two times a week. You know, so you could do randori one time hard, but you know the second time if you do it, it has to be a lot lighter. And I would suggest for the most part, I think it's better just once once a week from my experience, man. All right, let me just take a look at my notes here. Yeah, because you get injured, guys. Honestly, like if you're if you're if you're an older gentleman and all that, you don't have time to get injured. So you might not even want to do like hard the hard sparring once a week. You might just do it once or whenever when you feel ready. But you might just do light sparring once a week. You know, with people that you trust. Okay, so what else? Do 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 do. Man, I think I, I covered everything already. Wow, this is amazing in like about eight minutes. Um, da, 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 da. On strength and speed. Da, 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 take the... Okay, so here's the thing. Why should, this is the last point, right? Because I pretty much covered everything. So I'm, I'm actually pretty happy about that because I usually tend to make these videos a little bit long. Um, and okay, all combat sports are power sports. And because they're all power sports, that's why you have to spend most of your time, um, you know, getting stronger, perfecting your technique, perfecting your timing, working on your athleticism. Okay. Uh, so that would include like working on your balance, your, uh, your agility, your, um, your setups, you know, your, your ability to stabilize, you know, uh, your muscles to fire, you know, I, and I honestly, for a little while there, I was actually, against all of this, I, I was thinking to myself, man, you don't need all this, this fancy training, uh, stuff. All you have to do is practice your sport and then just focus on getting strong. But now I realized I, I was wrong on that. I was wrong on that. You know, there's, but there's two extremes, right? There's doing too much fancy, crazy 
uh, nonsense that ain't going to amount to and to, to nothing and that won't even carry over to your sport. And then there's the do absolutely nothing and just focus on getting big and strong and then do your sport. You know, there's a balance to be made there. I'll make another video about that, uh, what I'm currently working on. But um, yeah, that's it for this video, guys. So what do you guys think? Do you guys agree with once a week? How? What's your experience? Do you think that you need more uh, and so on? And yeah, just put it down in the comment section and uh, let me know what you think. Now, um, I, I want to say that there is a place for volume. And usually like the high level people, when you, when you see them uh, train, and, like they don't do a lot of randori because you know they kind of already done all of that when they were young. They've had a lot of volume. And even when you're a kid, like you don't do, it's not as, um, it's not as dangerous, you know, to do a lot of volume when you're a kid or it depends on how you do it, but they're doing it light though, right? Even as a kid, like think about it. You're a lot smaller, you're a lot lighter, you know, you're, um, you're playing for the most part. Obviously there's, there's kids who, who go, who go at it, but you know, they're, they're, they're ready for it at that point. It goes into progression. But what I'm saying is even the kids, like they don't, um, you know, never mind. I think that the kids is the same thing. Like they do a lot of volume in terms of techniques and drills and all that. And then even the randories, it's, I mean, they have more time. That's what it is. Because they, if they start competing and doing randori, like let's say once a week or two times a week, uh, then, you know, like let's say they start at five, by the time 10 year comes around, well, they're already, you know, way more, they have a lot of um, uh, randori under their belt, right? So, that's it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think. Love you all. So support the channel. Uh, share this video if you have um, uh, if you have anybody who uh, who needs to hear this and uh, helps the channel grow, man. Thank you, guys. Peace. Hmm?